Okay, so I've got iOS 12 installed, time to do some digging. Let's go ahead and take a look at the biggest changes Apple has implemented into iOS 12. What's new, what's different, where to find these features, how do they work? And of course, the biggest bullet points before we get into all these smaller things that Apple has hidden away. And I can assure you there actually is a ton of stuff. I mean, for example, you can now swipe away cards just like that. Super cool, little tiny handy little thing. But okay, before we get into the smaller ones, let's start with the big stuff. On the iPad, which Apple made no mention of whatsoever things are so much different now it has basically got all of the gestures from the iphone 10 on this larger interface so now to get into the app switcher it's the very same thing there's a swipe down here you can do that little quick swipe 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 go up and over to get into the app switcher just like that very very similar to what you're going to find on the iphone also you would swipe up to actually kill apps now also there's a new access to the control center from the top right so as you can see that's it there, very much like the iPhone 10 from the top right, it's not available from over here. It's not combined with the app switcher anymore, so everything looks a little bit cleaner. Everything is in its own section, and as you can see, they've gave it an iPhone 10 status bar-like look over here. We've got the date and time. Over here, we've got all the essential information like connection status, Bluetooth, battery, so very nice update to the iPad. And of course, this is preparing it for the full screen display. And the best thing about this is that going from an iPhone to an iPad, it's going to be a completely seamless experience now. You're not going to have to, you know, adjust to the different settings, the way it works with the home button. It basically doesn't even need the home button at all, which is nice. So definitely a huge update to the iPad. The next one is performance. And this one is especially a applicable to the older devices. I'm using it on an iPhone 5S right now. And I gotta tell you, I am a little impressed here. So Apple went ahead and updated this six-year-old phone almost, and I gave it the latest operating system, and it runs pretty dang smoothly. A few days ago, I did a test between iOS 7, the first operating system of the 5S, and the latest on iOS 11, and this is faster than the iOS 11 one. Honestly, it feels great. So Apple's boasting that apps do launch two times faster now, and I can say that does feel about right, especially on this older one. You're gonna get the share sheet coming up a little bit faster in the photos. So if I go up here, that's pretty decently fast, I guess. And from the lock screen, they said 70% faster access to the camera, which, yeah, it's pretty speedy. So. Um, I'm definitely feeling a speed improvement here on the iPhone 5S, which is the slowest device. So I'm sure it'll translate directly to newer devices as well. Definitely test it out in a speed test. And next up is the grouped notifications. So Apple has completely revamped the notification center. And as you can see now, all of your notifications are basically stacked if you have more than one from one source. So going over here, you can actually slide on them and manage the notifications. So now you can mute notifications from a certain source or turn them off altogether. And then clicking on the settings, or actually that dismissed it, I shouldn't have to do that. Um, but anyways, jumping into here, you should be able to mute the notifications or turn them off completely. So very nice update there. It's just, oh man, what is going on? See, this is, this is why you don't run a beta. You don't know how to get back. Um, seriously bugging out right now. So as you can see, it's very, very clean. Everything hides behind and then you can collapse it just like that. What we were asking from Apple for the longest time. Now this not only organizes them by the application it comes from, but also what the contents of the message contain or if it's part of a certain event. So it's a very smart notification system. You can also dismiss multiple notifications at once. So that's quite nice. Now in settings, you're gonna find an altogether new section called screen time. And this is your digital health dashboard, very much like that one in Android. It'll track all of your activity, basically how often you pick up your phone, which notifications you receive respond to, which app you spend the most time in. And you could really, really get down into the nitty and gritty here, see everything basically. And it's supposed to discourage addictive behavior where you pick your phone up every minute or so. So um, yeah, this will definitely make you a lot more aware. As you can see, within the last hour, I've picked it up 31 times or within the last couple of hours, most pickups between this time. So it's quite informative what it tells you and uh, how many notifications you get and so on. So very nice, but the main idea behind this is to monitor your children, to filter out certain things that you don't want them to be doing. And it's a very much upgraded restriction setting basically, and you have all the control from it from your iCloud. So uh, you can go ahead and set up everything here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that new emoji screen. It's got a slightly revamped interface. As you can see, welcome to Animoji. Here are the new ones, the koala, tiger, the dinosaur, and the ghost. And of course, your personal Memoji, which you can go ahead and add and then customize. So there I am. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the skin tone just a little. Yeah, I guess that one works. Freckles, no. Hairstyle, 
So give me a fade. All right, head shape. Huh, you can actually change age in here as well. How neat is that? The chin type, give me that crimson chin. There we go. And uh, eyes, and definitely brown, boring brown, very dark. Brows, man, this thing is pretty like articulate. It's got so many options in here. Bushy, nose and lips. Very interesting. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. That's very, very detailed. I don't know if I wanna go into all that detail, but it's very cool. So um, you can go ahead and record your own face at your leisure. And of course, there are the new ones as well if you wanted to become a T-Rex and a koala, tiger, and the ghost. So very neat. Oh, and of course, I forgot to say it has tongue detection. So now you can't do much with it. You can't put it to the side. You can just stick it out. Uh, and open your mouth. Nope, it just literally comes out in and out. So there's not much you can do with the tongue, just stick it out and that's it. Of course, there's now the option of group FaceTime. And I am echoing because I am in a small room. So anyways, you can go ahead and put emojis or emojis of your choice on your face here. I wonder if I can use my own personal one. Um, it does not let you use an emoji for this one, which is interesting, but uh, you can use other ones and they are quite large so you have to move the phone a little bit further back but uh, there is facetime and of course you can use it with up to 32 people so very nice that they made that update to uh, facetime the interface is quite legendary actually i think i like it very much and then of course you can add filters to the end emojis on top of that layer it's, it's pretty dang nifty so Feel like you can have a lot of fun with this one and next up you have ar kit so now there's a new app called measure and with ar kit 2.0 you have the ability to actually measure objects in real time so you can drop a point on the corner of this ipad here add a little plus and then go to that side there and add another plus and it stays in position so now you can go ahead and build on top of that and add to over here and if I wanted a diagonal measurement, I certainly could do that. So quite nice. And it's pretty dang accurate, I got to say. So there are those measurements on the iPad. Of course, you're going to have multiplayer AR using uh, AR Kit 2.0. So certain games will come out with compatibility for that. So I'm excited to see the possibility there. But so far, really not any way you can test that out just yet. But uh, yeah, there it is, AR Kit 2.0. Also, Photos has been upgraded. Not only is Photos smarter with the search capability, she's more aware of events and more object detection, but now there's a new tab called For You where there are certain subjects curated just for you. For example, you can see photos here taken exactly a year ago or possibly as part of an event. So basically a smarter Photos application that we already had, just more contextually aware. And it'll give you search suggestions automatically within here for certain things. Maybe you just took a picture, maybe you were just somewhere and it wants to remind you of that area. It's actually quite smart and quite diverse as Apple demoed in the event. And there's a wonderful feature called Do Not Disturb Before Bed. So in the existing Do Not Disturb area, now if you go into Scheduled, you'll find a bedtime mode in here. So enabling this will basically keep your notification center very clean, empty of anything you don't need to see until you leave bedtime mode. And as they demoed it, I was just like, wow, this is something I definitely need because it gets so hectic when you look over, you're about to sleep and your phone is full of notifications. And the new apps. So Stocks has been completely reimagined here. It's all new, it's got a dark interface, possibly a hint of what's to come in the future. Then again, we thought that about some other things like the clock app in iOS 11. But it's nice that within the stock app, you now have news. So you can get direct news related to whatever stock you're looking up. It's all in here, which is very nice. And then you have overnight tracking, after hour tracking in here as well. So definitely an upgraded stocks feature. Um, this was hyped for the longest time. I don't know how many of you guys care about it, but stocks has been reimagined. Also, you do have the new voice record feature or the application, which has a new icon as well. So this one has been made more user friendly, easier on the eyes as well. It's actually very simple. There's like almost no options in here. So very cool, nice updated couple apps. Oh, and Apple Books, which was renamed from iBooks, has a new interface as well inside. So quite pleasant on the eyes. 
also modernized inside. And finally, we arrive at Siri shortcuts. So inside of the Siri settings, now you'll have a new page for shortcuts or a section up here where you can go ahead and create either a suggested shortcut based on something you do all the time, a place you're at and a certain thing you do when you're at that place or a custom one by clicking on more shortcuts. So in here, she'll analyze your behavior and depending on what you do up top, she'll give you suggestions or you can create an altogether new one. So for example, if I wanted to ask her to view photos, all I'd need to do is really Hey Siri, view photos. And um, it's not very correct. But anyways, there's a lot of possibility and flexibility here with what Siri can do now. And I'm sure it's only going to grow from here. Other than that, guys, there's a lot of small, tiny features, which I'll be covering in my next video. But those are the biggest points. And I got to say the performance makes it a big deal. The usability on the iPad, the gestures are very nice. In general, the group notifications are probably my favorite feature. Aside from that, nothing really that stood out to me personally, but there's a lot of smaller things that I'm in love with. So I'll share that with you in my next video. Stay tuned.